See, a man uploads a video to YouTube or to Blip, I don't have to manually go in and submit that. I can, in the administration area, just put in our address for YouTube, and every time I send a video there or to Blip, it shows up in the administrative queue waiting for me to hit approve or, or reject. Okay? So you can, you can have it filter down that way. So those are video on demand um, areas. If you go, sorry, if you go back to Kino. Yeah. I'll talk about live streaming a bit. Um, those are things I just basically said out loud. You can switch the next. So web and TV. So I hear all the time in our building, and I heard here uh, over the last couple days, yeah, we could do all this stuff online, but oh my god, won't it endanger our cable channels and our franchise fees and the sky will fall and we'll all be doomed. Yeah, we don't have to do that. So, how do we integrate the web and the TV channel was a big question I had. So a lot of people that I was associated with in the video art world were like, oh, we don't need public access, we can just online video. And a lot of people in public access were like, oh, the internet's scary. So, how can we make the most of it? We, the biggest strength I think we have is the ubiquity of the TV channel and the fact that you can do live programming on it. So we can do live programming on the TV channel which of course appears simultaneously on our live stream online. And what that allowed us to do, we did something where we teamed up with the local newspaper, the Oakland Press, and last year we did a number of town hall live shows. You probably have done political town hall shows. What we did is um, we had the live program on our TV channel, we had it live streaming on our website, then we promoted it on the newspaper's website, so we took our live streaming channel and embedded it on the newspaper's website, as well as sending it to, if you're familiar with Patch, which is like a local news community around the country, we sent out uh, alerts to them, some of them embedded our live channel. So our channel, in addition to appearing on TV, appeared on all of these other websites. During the show, why don't you hit the space bar and it'll start playing, I think. During the show, we had a live studio audience, we took phone calls, which are, you can mute it, you know what they're gonna We took phone calls, which is a traditional public access route, and then we also had a person in there from the Oakland Press looking at their chat box. And as questions came in from their internet audience, we would put those up on the screen. So we had interaction from many different levels. There's a tremendous amount of people in our communities that don't know we exist. So we're able to get the word out about this through the Oakland Press and through our government friends that, hey, there's this meeting happening about a very important local issue. So come on and watch it on the channel. That alerts, us, alerts them to our existence. Two, we didn't have, none of these people in the audience had to take a class or pay a fee or become a membership or have their driver's license copied. We just said it's open to the public, show up and participate. So that got them involved in public access. Um, took the phone calls, another way that people can participate and learn about the channel without having to go through any rigmarole. We got calls from all over the state of Michigan. I called many state, public access stations and I promoted this. I called Traverse City, Grand Rapids, I think I called Ann Arbor. Um, so we got calls from outside of our TV viewing area, so that was online. And um, uh, so there's all that interaction, plus there was a great afterlife. This show was about the Troy Public Library funding, which was pretty local, but it also got picked up on some national sites because they were going to cut their public library. Uh, but we did some other shows about uh, Michigan medical marijuana law, and that got much bigger play around the state and then around the country. So the afterlife, when it lived in our video on demand section, we posted to Facebook and to YouTube, and like for the medical marijuana ones, I looked all over Facebook for medical marijuana groups in Michigan around the country. And I pasted the YouTube copy of this video into there and got promotion for that. And then later we did a second medical marijuana show where we got um, more audience response after watching that first one. So you can tie in the different mediums and make them work together. Um, I would just say do more live programming because it's a lot of fun. That's it. Goodbye. <laughs>
And this is this this is just like my favorite example of how we use videos online. This isn't a, a comprehensive view of everything we do with online programming. But uh, this site in particular was one where um, you know I knew I had this project and I knew that it needed to be someplace uh, attractive. So uh, I I looked at a lot of options that I could do uh, unilaterally. I could build a site. I could figure out how to code it. Even though I'm not a coder, I can figure these things out. But I thought to myself, you know, I've got all these people around me that do other things. So this was one where I I looked for a partner, and I didn't have to look very far because the Rapidian is another media wing of the uh, community media center as a whole. Um, and interestingly, they, they have a completely different audience. Um, so I just asked them, hey, you know, like I'm, I'm planning on building up all this content. Um, how do you feel about hosting it? And they uh, were really excited about it. And I sent them a sample video and they're like, how soon can you get this put together? Um, so in that case, you know, it was nice to, nice to have somebody else excited about the project. And then we reached into like a third prong uh, of, of kind of our network of media people to uh, outline what we would like to, to have this do, kind of the interface, the presentation, all that, and, and talk to some IT people um, that we work with. And they were able to uh, code this. This is all built off of Drupal, which is an open source content management system. Um, it's, uh, you, there, you know, I, I don't know a lot about Drupal, but I know that it's very, very uh, customizable and scalable. You can find all sorts of different open source widgets to make all sorts of things happen in it. So I kind of outlined just what I would like to see it do. I would like to see all the videos displaying on one page uh, because their uh, collective uh, impact, I think, is... Uh, more powerful than seeing them all, all the card. And I would like to see the window, how it pops up. I don't know. Can you, can you click on one just so that the window pops up? So I was like, I don't want to have to leave this page to watch a video, but I also don't want the rest of the page to be in the way or be cluttering up the video when it plays. Um, who knows if this kind of work, the internet's been kind of shaky, but. Uh, so that's kind of where it is. I mean, I, you know, like, importantly, trying to find media partners um, within your organization or within your uh, larger community, uh, I think, is an important thing. And what's great, like I said, being able to use the Rapidian instead of uh, the Cable Access Center's website, you know, being able to do it that way and embed our library of this content in our partner's website we're kind of reaching two audiences at once and, and using each other's assets to make a bigger, uh, a, you know, a bigger project. So um, the workflow for this uh, is, uh, I'm not the only person, I, I kind of conceived the idea and helped with the first probably 20 before I got really busy. So. <laughs> But in that process, we kind of got a workflow down so we, we can nail out these videos, um, edit them. We kind of know where we're going with them ahead of time. Um, just like any other series, you do the first few to try to work out the kinks, and then you know they kind of they kind of start to take on you know like a workflow that you know. So at this point, there's the other guys that I work with at the, the television station do the editing on these, and then. We upload everything to you, uh, Vimeo for these uh, because of the, uh, the quality. Oh, sorry. I was That's all right. Uh, Mike, I think it's a great idea. I have one question. It is Mike, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I have one question. Do you have, did you run into uh, problems with copyright or, or uh, getting these artists to allow you to put them on the website? Um, not problems. If somebody doesn't want us to do it, uh, we don't. We ask them as they come in. They all, you know, sign a release. It's kind of part of the paperwork process um, for making an agreement to to come in in the first place. So they're all aware that it's going to happen. You know, there's 
three cameras in a room with them, so it's not like we're shocking them by, with the fact when they see this online, they're like, where'd that come from? I mean, it's a small space, so they knew we were there. Open conversation, they all signed off on it, so. So that, that's never been an issue, just because of, of the nature of it. But, um, yeah, what I was saying uh, is that we, you know, we, we don't have, um, we don't have a lot of paid services that we use to, to, to be able to use the internet. This is all Vimeo based, which is a paid service, but it's not expensive. It's uh, $10 a month for a plus account, which just basically lets us upload more than, you know, their really low minimum. Um, what I like about doing that is I'm, I'm using essentially the same tools that, uh, you know, the guy at the coffee shop down the street is using. Um, and like I said earlier, in, you know, and, and to my mind, trying to use the tools and, and put content online in places where people go naturally, where, you know, like meeting people in the habits that they already have developed uh, is a smart approach to me because uh, in that way we can apply what we know technically um, and, and practice by working on videos day in and day out uh, into an educational uh, kind of perspective that really meets people at the level that they could get to with not much uh, beyond what they probably already have. I mean, everybody's got their computer. Not everybody, but every, a lot of people have their computer. They've got a phone now that is capable of video. There you go. You know, like, and this is the environment that we're in in peg programming. You know, where um, where we need to find ways to be able to uh, to meet people in that spot and still be relevant. So we can apply a, a much larger uh, kind of knowledge base and, and media perspective and use those tools and then teach people to use the tools that they already have better and utilize the resources that, that everybody has available to them better. And then people, uh, then the trade-off that we have with people in an educational sense, I feel is a little bit, uh, it, it, it can go further because once they're no longer at uh, my station, um, yeah. Obviously, just being different media types, we've each got our own unique audience, and and the idea of collaborative work, um, uh, in this case, is that we're kind of combining audiences and, and uh, broadening the reach of the media. Because if 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 it was only on the GRTV website, which it is, okay, you know, well, that's what I was asking because I've seen the opinion out there. Right. This is this is its home. Everything will link back to this, okay. but we'll em embed these videos all over the place. But all of those embeds will take you back here. But we're basically just using, uh, you know, trying trying to spread out the uh, the involvement, like the the collaboration, so that uh, a more diverse uh, set of audiences can all go back to the same thing. And this is where you know. There's all these different media types, but there's a lot of ways that all these different media types overlap. And, and it's trying to find ways to really like nail that center of all of those overlapping circles to uh, hit as much uh, impact as we can. Well, I didn't know it was an intentional um, choice by Lori to have the Rapidian get more um, views, more hits, by having this new video I had 25 videos online before I even showed this to Lori, so yeah, it wasn't like a strategic thing that was uh, that was trying to like promote the Rapidian. It was just that the Rapidian was the right place for these videos, um, which is what I you know I said earlier. It's in my opinion, I don't think that you have to go to one place for every video. I think that kind of clutters uh, 
that clutters the message um, to me. And so, you know, I think there has to be a central repository. Everything can point back to one place. Everything can point back to your access center as the place that, that helps produce these. But things look better and are more impactful when they're put in the right spot. Um, and so in this case, to me, like, this just seemed like the most natural place to collect these, these particular videos. Um, was the choice for black and white more artistic expression or technical bandwidth? Absolutely nothing to do with bandwidth. Okay. Um, yeah, no, it's just, you know, part of the, partly it, did, it was like a technical question, um, but that's that there's so many different CDs in that room that all the colors kind of just sure. muddy together. But it works. Our, I'm just yeah, curious. no. It was definitely an artistic decision because uh, what you probably don't realize looking at this is there's about 50-50 national touring bands on here and local artists. And when they're all black and white like that, um, it kind of completely strips that distinction. So you see that guy here, that guy here, this Matt Gabriel guy, lives about two blocks from me. And, um, you know, you go couple things down, those guys down there, that line, those guys are from LA. But because everything's kind of presented on an equal footing and black and white really heightens that, it kind of just strips away all the distinctions so these all these creative projects live next to each other with uh, like in harmony. Is somebody over here wants to go ahead and walk by Oh really? Okay. You know and, and it's shocking on you know, I think it's a little bit more shocking to, yeah. to use black and white now. Um, it's kind of, you know, going the opposite way. The pillar's been around so long, so now you can use black and white. It's like, there you go. Did that on purpose. So it really works, too, with uh, your radio station setting. Yeah, I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying, yeah, it's definitely good to have good partners. But Great time. Is there any more questions before I open my coffee? something where there was going to be ease and speed. Um, with the Peg Central, there is a bit of a cost, but we're sharing, we're sharing the cost with the city and the county. And so that kind of helps take some of the burden of paying for it and puts it on to entities that have more of a budget than we do, which is something that's pretty amazing. Um, the Fort Wayne City has decided that they want to try to keep every single government meeting on the website permanently. So what's gonna end up happening is our PEG Central account is gonna grow. Uh, we can go through and separate everything out by different categories and you can go back even to 2010 and watch the city council meetings. Um, so it's, it's been something that's been really big. The, the members of the city council and the mayor love having the fact that you know maybe if they weren't at a meeting or if they missed something, they could go back really quickly and watch everything that went on during the meetings. Um, the Peg Central account is pretty user friendly as far as what you want to do. To be able to get logged into it, you just go to the main page and then you can do a login. Uh, we can do things like setting up chapters and, and marker guides so that, that way if people you know, we, we get the agenda and people can go through and they can skip down straight to the point of the meeting where they were discussing the items that they're interested in. Um, whenever there's any sort of budget talks or whenever there's any sort of talks about raising any sort of rates for like water or sewer, we're, we always have a lot of hits on, on those um, meetings and whatnot. Um, we can go through and put some metadata in so people can search for specific items. Question. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's say that there were 20 items on the agenda, and the 15th one was talking about an alley abatement that's near you. You can go straight to that item as opposed to having to watch through the entire meeting. Um,
sometimes it's done after the meeting. We also have a 